guys. In today's video, we'll be doing something a little different than our standard die sublimation. We'll be doing some 3D printing and painting. Uh, much like our buddy did pull back here, uh, we're going to be we're going to be 3D printing and painting a Jason Voorhees mask from the Friday the 13th franchise. It'll be a it'll be it'll be a necklace, is what it is. So I did some a little 3D modeling. We'll show you how all that works in like Cura. We'll go through the 3D print process, and we'll paint, weather, blood splatter, and also uh, seal it for longevity. Um, so what we'll be doing we'll be going from something like this, just a standard 3D printed piece to something more like this. This is the first one, so it's not as good, but something like that. It has a little more texture and a little more detail, and it'll be a wearable necklace. And the cool thing about that is we're gonna be giving that away. Um, because we finally reached 500 subscribers, um, if you wanna enter the giveaway to, to win the necklace mailed directly to you that we used in the video, uh, just like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and just comment down below, and, and we'll, we'll draw us a winner and we will mail that right to you and it's gonna be amazing. But without further ado, here's how you do it and I appreciate the, the love and support, guys. Uh, first things first, you open Ultimate Akira. Um, if you've done any 3D printing, you'll know what this is. This is like a, a 3D printing prep program. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open this STL file. I'll, I will have the STL file available um, probably on Thingiverse or something, but I'll, I'll put a link in that uh, to that in the description below and we'll get that going. Let's see here. Uh, by default, it stands up on its end. Uh, that's not the best way to print this. I don't, I think, I think doing it face down on this surface right here is the best thing. So what you do is you select the model, um, you snap rotation, uh, you, you select face to align to the build plate and just click that guy and it'll throw it right down there. And I, I feel like that produces the best quality print, but that that's just, you know, I, I'm not a 3D printing expert, so somebody may have a better way to do it, but my typical settings, what I do, I just do the dynamic, dynamic quality, um, two wall thickness, uh, six bottom layers. Um, I do 206.62 on the temperature, 20% feel. Um, I, I print mine a little slower than what most people probably do. It's worth mentioning, I do print on a, a glass print bed. Um, of course, you're going to want to generate supports everywhere. Um, usually, I do a skirt just to, just to avoid plastic extrusion problems, but that's just me. So, with that being said, if that looks good, you can see the little, the little spot down here for the necklace. All that, it's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and slice that bad boy. <clears throat> go ahead and preview it. You can see the, the the supports and everything. There we go. And that's really it. I mean, after that, you just save it to file, and and when we'll go through and print it. All right. Now I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch a three D printer for two hours, so I'll go ahead and throw in a time lapse and speed this up for you guys. Let's get to uh, let's get to cracking here. Where's all my paintbrushes? There we go. Um, first thing I like to do is put a quick coat of black down on the back side of the uh, the Jason mask just to just to give it a more finished look. So we'll go ahead and shake the paint up. Usually I just use a paper plate to do all my mixing. That should be more than adequate. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop this out of the. Uh, Let's see, we'll go ahead and pop this guy out of the, see that's the mold. I usually keep it to ship the things in, so it's not that big a deal. Put a little water on the brush. 
get a little bit of paint and we'll start painting the back side of this just to give it a little more polish polished look Cause that stark white doesn't really look good whenever you, you know, I, I prefer it to be a little bit darker. Get a little bit more. There we go. And even if I get a little bit on my hands, I'm okay with that. So what I do is I just grip the outside edges and just kind of roll with it. And just make the inside of the mask a little more dirty. Cause stark white doesn't look good on the on the inside. You even get the hole a little bit. It just goes a long way to look to make it look more finished. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and clean up the front side of this mask with a little water. and clean them up a little bit. We'll go ahead and really clean them up. So since we got a little bit on there, we can kind of And if, if you notice the uh, when you clean it up a little bit, it already has kind of a weathered effect just from that. It's crazy. Just how much a quick coat, a little, a little bit of paint changes things. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and put that down. Go ahead and clean my hands. And see, there we go. That way we got a decent looking backside and the front side starting to get a little, a little tint of weather. And that's just from the black that we rubbed on. Nice and thin, looks really good. But we'll let this dry and then we'll come back with our with our base coat, which is the, uh, that'll be the, the lightened brown to do the actual Jason mask. Which, that's a, that's a really tough color to get right, but we'll get it. All right, now that that's kind of dried, we're ready to start, uh, start mixing for our, our other color. And then this brown and this kind of paint's incredibly strong. So what I have to do is I have to just put literally a drop. Just literally a drop. Then we'll have to do probably about two drops of white to get it to even look remotely correct. And then we'll get us a little brush to mix with. This guy will be just fine. And you'll see just how strong just that one little drop of brown is. Like it made it super I feel like it needs, I don't know, let's see. I feel like it could be a little more, let's, let's, let's test it, let's test it. Where's our medium paintbrush? Not bad, this guy. Let's go ahead and clean him up. Let's put us a nice thin layer of this on there. So what we'll do is now that it's dry, we'll go ahead and hold it and we'll go ahead and throw that on there. Just a nice thin layer to give it more of that, uh, you know, that, that Jason color. Uh, it's like a tannish, it can make it a little, little more weathered looking. Including hitting the edges. Cool. I think it may need another coat, especially the front. Which 
trying to keep it in front of that while I'm doing it, but it's a little uncomfortable to see the detail. There we go. I don't know how good you can see it in the light, but it's a... It's really close to what I think it should look like. I maybe could even go a, a shade darker. But... We'll, we'll, we can finish that with, with, a, with a very transparent coat of black and I think we'll be fine. So we'll let this dry. Now that that's somewhat dry, uh, it's time for the, probably what I consider the most difficult part of the whole thing, which is masking the stripes, the, the Jason, the decals from the hockey mask. And usually I try to go right between these two lines right here and just make me a line. And just kind of do the best you can with that. Uh-oh, we're peeling a lot of paint off. Let's give it a couple more minutes because I don't think it's quite dry. Probably the hardest part is making the, uh, what you want to do is you just want to kind of make the little, the little thing. Let's see. You want to make the design for the uh, Jason hockey mask. And you want to try to center that as good as you can. Right above the nose. Right above the eyes. Just... If it helps, you can use these two, two holes right here to kind of center you up. I don't know how confident I am in this. Because, see, you can assume those two lines are parallel. Golly, this is hard. I don't know how good that's on there. Part of me is thinking about just starting hand painting these. How much easier it might would be. All right, I'm mildly confident on that. That that's somewhere decently. So we'll go ahead and mix us some red paint. And if we don't like it, we can just undo it. Don't need but a drop. And I usually just use a small little tiny paintbrush. And I just fill that guy in. Well, shoot. I have to undo that. Here we go. And then I usually immediately peel. And see, I got a big mess right here where I blobbed it on there when I was trying, because I bumped the camera while I was messing with it. So what we'll do is we'll make sure we have all that off. We'll use a little water and kind of just get it. Maybe just touch that up with a little bit of paint to fix it. There's no problem. We can totally fix it. We'll just use a little water to fade it, and you'll never know it was there. So let's fix, let's see if we can fix this little line that bothers me. What we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just kind of touch that up just a little bit. See if we can get more of a spike. See, that doesn't look too bad. It's, it's tough to get so much detail on these things. I think I'm just going to try to hand paint the other side. Um, actually, I have a finer paintbrush. Let me get that. I see a little finer paintbrush right here. This little guy. 
I probably need better paintbrushes, but I don't think the paintbrushes are the reason I do bad. So what I like to do is I just, if I hand paint them, I like to put three dots and kind of connect the dots. So I think right here, right here, and right here, I think are about where I need to go. So based on that, just do just like that. I think just like that is what I need to do. Just get a minute little bit of paint. And just roll with it. And see, I think that looks reasonably good from a distance. Like I said, my painting's not the greatest. We'll go ahead and I had a phone call like right in the middle of shooting a video. Let's, uh, let's fix this. Let's use a little bit of paint. We can fix this line right here. There we go. Now that looks pretty decent. Let's see if there's any other spots that need to be fixed. Like I'm not 100% thrilled with this little spot right here. But, since we still have paint left over, we can just fix it. We can fix it and make it more triangular. There we go. Now, if you notice any hard lines, what you can do, you can take a little water and kind of just fade it. And you can soften it up a lot. And there we go. That's what we have so far. All right, now that that's dry, we, uh, we want to take a nice, the smallest paintbrush we have again, which is this guy. And we want to weather every single hole on the mask. So to do that, we get a, a little bit of water, a little bit of black paint. Now what you want to do is just kind of go around the holes. You want to do it on every edge, every hole. Actually, I think I need a slightly larger paintbrush. Sorry, another phone call. Let me, uh, let me get this. Let me... All right, this size should be perfect for the holes. So what you do is you just kind of touch the holes. Oops, messed that up. We'll get a little water and undo that. Ooh, I goofed that up worse. But a little bit more water. You can kind of just make it work. Undo. And see. You can kind of undo it with a little bit of water. All right, so a little bit of paint. There we go. And so you can slowly just go around the holes and kind of weather each one with a little bit of... I swear people call it the worst possible times. All right, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get our brush back wet. Let's get the rest of these holes weathered. So what we do is we take it just kind of dip it around there, dip it in each hole until we get all of them. Uh-oh, got some stray hairs on my brush. That's wanting to do their own thing. bit more paint and there we go and now what we do is we take a little bit of paint and go around the entire edge of the mask 
just ever so gently. Just kind of brush it. Whoops, not like that. Not like that. We're gonna have to undo that. So a little bit of water. Make sure our brush is good and clean and just kind of wipe. And then just give it a little wipe. You see, these these are what I call them happy mistakes, much like Bob Ross. You just kind of just do things. Sorry guys, I literally ran out of storage like halfway through my video. That's terrible. But this is what we have so far. And what we were doing, we were going around the edge of the mask and just kind of just do it, taking a little black paint. And just kind of brushing the edge just slightly. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, it's fine. Beauty and imperfections. But it's details like this that makes it look amazing. It's all the little details, man. It's starting to get tough to find a place to actually hold the thing. There we go. Um, yeah. Let's do this. Let's hold it just like this. And get the last little bit. Now, like I said, I'm not a professional painter. I'm not really even very good at it. But I do enjoy making stuff. So, see, this is what we have so far. Is this. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's getting there. Now we just need a little bit more weathering to it. So to do this, we get our really fine brush, and we're going to try to outline the cracks with a little thin layer of black, like as thin as you can get. There we go. Just touch it. And we're going to go right in the crack, and just go with it. Just a little bit, just to kind of highlight it. And then since the paint's still wet, we can kind of scruff it a little bit. And then we can take a brush, a different brush, use a little water and clean up what we don't want, which are little areas outside. We can kind of clean that up a little bit and kind of get that how we want it. And now we got this. So overall that looks pretty good. Um, What we'll do now is we'll go ahead and uh, do the blood splattering effect and we'll be good to go. The blood splattering is always almost the most fun part for me anyway. I really enjoy it. But what I do is I take the leftover red and I just mix. Well, that's a bad way to do it. That's a terrible way to do that. Let's take a touch of black. You can see that black's extremely powerful. 
the acrylics. And see, it doesn't take much to really, that's not really a blood red. We need a hair lighter because it's it's it seems like it dries a hair darker than what you. So we're gonna add one more drop. There we go. What we'll do is we'll stir that. And see if that gives us the color we're looking for. I think that's much closer to the red we're looking for. Maybe even a little, a touch lighter. That's how it looks on white. I think we can go one more drop and mix it good and I think we'll be good to go. That was a little aggressive for one drop. Yeah. That's, that was a little aggressive for one drop. But I think that's just about right. There's our blood. I think we got it now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and soak up all the blood and just flick him. And you'll see it's going everywhere. But that's the best part of it. And you'll notice I'm doing it from the right side because in the movies, Jason is primarily right-handed. Let's get the balance of our paint. Let's go ahead and flick it. And without touching it too much, there's our blood flickered, blood pattern Jason mask. And some dirty hands. So all right, I think that concludes uh, this video. The next step is, or ne this part anyway. The next step is clear coating. We'll, uh, we'll roll through with that real quick. All right, let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this last stage done. And that's just clear coating the face to, uh, to protect it. Usually I don't do this inside, but, uh, but with the minimal amount, I think, it's, I think it's fine. I got my shop fan running too. So we'll go ahead and just brush that all on. Get that on there nice and thick. I don't need it. And it'll actually do a little bit of a favor to the uh, to the coating. It'll uh, it'll darken it up a little bit once it's all said and done. So then that's what we have, and we'll go ahead and let that guy dry, and it'll be good to go. As always, I appreciate I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the subscribers. I'm gonna go ahead and get this mess cleaned up. And I'll see you later. Alrighty, it's been a couple hours, so it should be dry, at least enough to the touch. Uh, we'll let it dry a couple more days before we send it out or anything. But, uh, but yeah, this is what we come up with. It's a very nice little uh, pendant. It's perfect for somebody that's a fan of the franchise. Uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and... Uh, Drop a subscribe, uh, drop a like, uh, comment down below. If you want to be entered in the giveaway, as long as you're a subscriber, you can like the video and add a comment, and and we'll, we'll go ahead and start uh, start the giveaway. But I really appreciate it, guys. I appreciate the 500 subscribers. Um, peace. See y'all later.